Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyRadiation.com and welcome to next video of developing microservices with ASP.NET Core 6.0 with minimal API. And in this video, we're talking about adding entity framework for data layer within our existing microservice that we developed in our last video. Well, the goal of this video is to create a data retrieval using entity framework. If you remember in our last video, we actually retrieved the data using an employee collection, which was actually an collection list file, which actually had all our data of an employee. But this time we are actually going to be retrieving the data from the entity framework based entity collection. So this is going to be looking something like this. And as you can see, the syntax has got a bit more difference this time. Like there is a from services and there is an employee DB context. So the from services is pretty much like it's going to be coming from the service. We can change the syntax from a sync of the employee DB context of DB context. The from services and preview feature of ASP.NET Core 6.0. So I have used that uh, over here. So this is how we are going to retrieve the data from the database using the entity framework. So that's the goal. So in order to start achieving this goal, we are going to first of all install the entity framework within our existing code. So we are going to be referencing some of the packages, something like this. We're going to install Microsoft Entity Framework Core version 5.0.8 and then the Microsoft Entity Framework Core.design for the EF migrations and updates and stuff. And then the SQL Server, because that's the database I'm going to be using. If you're going to be using some other database like PostgreSQL, you could use that as well as a references. Finally, we also need to install the .NET tools for the entity framework because that's something important to be installed within our machines. If you don't really have it in your machine, you need to install that in the global context or in the project context. It's up to you how you're going to go with, but I'm going to be installing the global context. So these are the tools that we need to be installing and referencing within our project. And once it's done, we are going to start using our existing model that we used for the employee, the ID name and citizenship. And then we are going to create the DB context. So this is where we are going to set the DB context of the database that we are going to be creating using entity framework. So this is the usual entity framework stuff. There is no change on that. If you have good understanding about entity framework, you might be very, very familiar with the code base that you're looking at over here. If it is new for you, I'm not going to go deep into the entity framework itself, but I will show you how the entity framework works and how we can create stuff. But I'm not going to give you a lot of details about the entity framework itself, because that's not the whole idea about this particular series. So that's about the data tool part using entity framework. And finally, we need to wire up using these settings. So we need to have a connection string within our app settings start JSON file. And once it is there, we are going to call the app settings or JSON file using the builder.configuration.get connection strings. And then we need to do a dependency injection of the DB context. That's it. Once it is there, we can then call up using this particular code that we are finally going to be achieving. And once everything is there, like once we have all these database and everything, we are going to be doing the .NET EF database update to create a database into the database server uh, that we have defined in the connection string over here. So that's it, guys. This is about whole thing that we are going to be discussing in this particular video. But there are still so many things left behind, which we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this particular series. Let's get started. So this is the same project that we were discussing in our last video. And now I'm going to add the dependencies to start working with the entity framework integration within our existing microservice that we were creating using the minimal API of ASP.NET Core. So I'm first going to go to the manage NuGet package in the dependencies, and then I'm going to browse and search for the entity framework core. So entity framework core. And I'm going to install the Entity Framework Core version 5.0.8. And I also need the SQL Server because we are going to be using the SQL Server as the backend. And then I also require the Entity Framework design during the Entity Framework migrations and stuff from the CLI. So I'm going to install this as well. That's it. So once we have all these packages, we can then start working with the entity framework itself. So the first thing is the model that we have at the moment over here, this has the entity, this has the employee collection, which we don't really require because we are not going to be using this particular uh, employee anytime sooner. So I'm just going to comment this particular piece of code because this is not going to be something we are going to be using. Um, control KC. And then I'm going to start using the same folder, the model folder to start creating some of the files which is required for our entity framework to work well to retrieve the data from the SQL server. So the first thing is I'm going to create an uh, employee 
uh, context or employee DB context, something like that. And within this employee DB context, I am going to add the DB context, which is required uh, for the entity framework. So let me do that DB context control dot and using this one. And once we have this, we are going to start creating some of the constructors and stuff. So let's add the control dot over here and it says generate constructor and generate constructor with the options. So I'm going to use the options because this is something I really require to be added. Uh, but instead of the DB context, just without any DB uh, context that is been not specified. I'm just going to use the employee DB context over here because this is the one which we are going to be using. And then I also am going to create the uh, DB set. So for doing that, I'm just going to say public uh, DB set of the employee, pretty intelligent enough to tell me that. Uh, and I'm just going to say get and set. There we go. And this is something required for our code to generate employee table on the database. Uh, and then I also need to do an on configure. So I'm just going to override like this and deselect all. And let's choose the on configuring option. Uh, and then I'm going to hit OK. So this is going to bring up the DB context options builder. And on this one, we are going to call the uh, configuration part of it. So uh, for the configuration part, I'm just going to use this var configuration is equal to new configuration builder. Let's hit control dot from the Microsoft extension. And once we have this, uh, I'm then going to do a set base path of the file that I'm looking for. So I'm basically looking for the file, which is the app settings.json file. So let's do that directory dot uh, control dot system dot io of the get current directory uh, and then i'm going to add the json file and the json file is going to be this one the app settings dot json file so it's going to be app settings dot json and once i have this i'm just going to do a build that's it which is cool so this app setting .json file is the one which is responsible for holding our connection strings that we are going to be entering to connect with our database so i'm just going to add that particular connection string over here something like this and you will see that there is a localhost database as employee db uh, sa as the username and the password is a bit strong password some of the requirement of the passwords uh, for the sql server to make a strong password and then once we have this we are going to make the connection so in order to make the connection uh, we are going to do something like var connection string is equal to configuration of get connection string <laughs> quite interesting it tells me that uh, and then I'm going to say the app DB, which is going to hold the connection string. And then I'm going to say option builder dot use SQL server. That is quite nice. Visual Suite 22 is bringing all the code, which I'm really required uh, to be entered over here. So that's it. That's the uh, part that I really require to be added for the SQL server connection. Cool. And once I have this, uh, my connection is going to be made automatically. But I also need to add a few more things, as I told you on the slide. We need to add the dependency uh, injection on the program.cs file. So before the build command, I need to add the var connection string once again of the builder dot configuration dot get connection string. So that's going to be basically a extension method uh, this one let's try adding that control dot there we go uh, and then i'm going to say app db and over here i'm just going to say builder dot services dot add db context and hit control dot oops I don't see that working pretty fine over here. So let's see what does it says. Uh, builder is use is a variable, but used like a type. Um, that's all right. Let's hit control dot. And I think 
it's something uh, not coming up over here so let's see i think it's the visual studios uh 2022's problem but i think the db context should have come by now but it is not coming up so let me see if the dependency is really being added so entity framework entity from code design uh sql server so i think everything is looking good so let's try doing this so using microsoft dot entity framework core is that looking good and i also need to add the dependency uh, injection this one let's save it so you can see that the intelligence is not coming up uh, which is all right uh, so it should have uh, come by but i don't know for some reason it's not uh, and then the connection string is going to be the connection string that we are going to be passing in cool so that's it so this is the connection string for the database uh, that we really require uh, to be added as a de dependency injection because that's something we are going to be using within this controller uh, over here that's it so once we have this we can then start doing our entity framework stuff uh, but before we start uh, working with entity framework like creating the database uh, tables in the database we first of all need to have the database server up and running so for doing that i have a sql server already uh, available within my uh, docker container so i'm just going to open the terminal and then i'm just going to show you what i really mean so docker uh, images so if you see i have the uh, SQL Server image over here, which is of 2019. So I'm just going to use that one. So in order to use the SQL Server, I'm just going to use this particular command, the docker run hyphen rm hyphen e of the accept uh, ula of y and the password, which is the password that we have used within our uh, connection string over here. And then I'm just going to uh, start connecting with this particular database image that we have and i'm going to run this as a container so once i do that you will see that it is going to run on an interactive mode that's why i have set like an it so that you can see what's happening behind the scene uh, without opening the log uh, from the docker uh, so you can see it is up and running right now and now i can open the management studio of microsoft which is going to be sql server management studio and i'm going to connect to the server uh oops i think the password is wrong so let me copy this password and paste it over here let me connect this there we go it is connected and you will see that it is connected to the linux distribution of the sql server and there is this database and you can see there is no database at the moment because we have no database created yet so we are going to start creating the database using the entity framework from the command line tool that i was talking about so i'm going to open a new terminal over here as i told you we already need to have the tool uh, which is the dotnet ef tool to be installed and i already have the dotnet ef tool so if you just search for dotnet uh, ef something like this if you have installed already it will gonna, it's going to show you the entity framework uh, core dotnet command line tool if not please do install that and it's since it is already installed i'm not going to install it once again and we are then going to do this dotnet ef but before that we need to get into that particular directory uh, to start performing the operation so i'm just gonna open the file in the directory uh, and i'm just gonna navigate to that particular directory uh, and then i'm gonna do this let me do the screen clear uh, ef dotnet ef database of update so once we do this it is going to start reading uh, the models and the db context and then it is going to start creating the uh, database for us on the database server but you can see that there is a build failure i think there is a build failure already in our code uh, which is this because we have commented the code so let me comment this code which is responsible for the employee collection um all right let's try running it once again there we go and we get this error which says like unable to create an object of type employee db context and i have seen this error many times happening uh, if i use the db context without a default constructor so basically we need to have like a default constructor here and this fix this problem it doesn't really tell me exactly what does that really mean but uh, it works by just having a default constructor uh, over there and you can see that currently it's it's done it is working fine without any problem which is cool so once we have this uh, we can see within our database if i just refresh this database 
uh, you can see we have this employee db and we have uh, a, a table with migration uh, something like this like ef migration history of course we have not did any migration so far so it is not going to be uh, holding any data for us uh, and once we have this uh, table and the database over there the next operation we're going to do is we are going to do an initial migration uh, which is going to be like adding the employee table itself so for doing that we are going to do this dotnet ef database migration add initial db something like that and you can see that it is uh, reading it and uh, oops i think it's not migration it is migrations so if you find this kind of uh, issues like what what is this particular uh, command line if you really forget it you can do this dot uh, net ef help where it tells you what command that we need to be using and you can see that i need to use the migrations instead of migration uh, which is my bad so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna hit add that's gonna add the uh, initial db migration script for us so it's done and once it is added you will see there is going to be a migrations folder created with the initial db and it's going to have that create table operation which is going to create the employee table for us based on the model that we have created which is going to be this particular model the employee model and it automatically sets the varchar for the employee id the name as in varchar um, and the citizenship stuff and uh, it also sets the uh, the drop table of employee if you really want to down that uh yeah so everything is there for us which is cool and there is also this employee db contest model snaps and stuff and if i go to the database once again uh like this and if i uh, just refresh this you will not see any table added by the way because we also need to do uh what is called as the update once again so if i just go back database ef uh, database update you can see that the initial uh, db migration script has been added and now if i go back to the sql server and if i refresh it you will see that there is going to be a table for the employee and definitely on the migration script this time you will have some data so you will see that there is an initial db being added so that's the uh, migration history being added for us and the employee table is not going to have any data at the moment the reason being we don't really have any data uh, inserted so we need to seed the data so in order to seed the data we are going to be doing what is called a seeding of data with entity framework which we'll be discussing in our next video and you'll understand how easy it is to do in entity framework and that way we can start creating the microservice to read the data that we have in the database instead of just reading the empty data meet you in our next video